My parents come first. So make your mother go home. It was at this point that my love for my husband has completely disappeared. Right, let's go home then. He grinned. Finally, you're going to obey me. Well, then make sure to look after our house. I ignored my husband's words and began to walk into the inn with my parents. Hey, what the hell are you doing? The inn's exit is the other way over there. Huh? Because you told me to go home, didn't you? That's why we're going home. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? This inn is my father's parents' home, you know. Excuse me? My name is Marla. I'm a 30 year old office worker. I was raised by my father, who works for the government, and my mother, a housewife. I respect both of my parents my father, who is strict but teaches me the right path, and my mother, who is understanding, flexible in her thinking, and having a calm aura. I have been working at the company for eight years, which was where I began to work for night after I graduated college. After eight years working as an adult in the society, as one would expect, one experiences many things. I married my husband Chris when I was 25 years old. When I was 27, I gave birth to our first child, our son, Aaron. After taking maternity and childcare leave, I returned to work and now work as an office worker while raising our son and taking care around the house. Although my husband is kind in some ways, there are some things I like to complain about. First of all, Chris basically doesn't do any of the housework. I don't blame him for not being able to cook well. My husband lived at his parents' house all his life until we got married, so he has never cooked on his own. However, I would like him to do at least the laundry and cleaning around the house, which anyone can do as soon as they learn them, but he always puts the responsibility onto me by saying, Marla, you always get it done quicker than me, so... At first, everyone is slow, but as you get used to it, you'll get faster at it too. I would explain that to him, but he would give vague answers and eventually not do it. And around that time, I became pregnant and went back to my parents' home to give birth at a local clinic near my parents' house. I had hoped that while I was gone away, Chris would at least learn to do his own housework during that time. But apparently, my mother-in-law had moved in and taken care of the house chores while I was gone. Hearing this story, I was disappointed and decided to stop having expectations about my husband doing the housework for me. Another frustration was the presence of my parents-in-law. As I mentioned earlier, my mother-in-law spoils her only son, my husband, and visited us frequently. She also seems to think that her adorable only son was taken away by me, his wife, and she would always glare at me. Marla, what is this? What the heck is this dish? Well, uh, obviously it's curry. I know that it's curry. Huh? Then why would she even ask me that question? Where are the meat? Huh? The meat for the curry. You want Chris to eat a curry without any meat? Grill some meat right now. What? But you can't just grill any meat. Make sure you prepare it and grill good quality beef. That's what my mother-in-law would order me to do. We didn't have kids at the time, so the burden was a little less, but it was still difficult on me physically and mentally to hear my mother-in-law say such troublesome things to me, especially after work. Oh, it's curry with meat today. Please eat as much as you like, honey. I grilled lots of meat for you, Chris. Yay! This is the best. Thank you. But I was the one who cooked it, though. My mother-in-law was smiling and serving the food to my husband as if she took credit when I was the one who put all the time and effort into making it. When my husband once said, I'm glad I get to eat a lot of my mom's cooking even if we get married, I indeed snapped at him when it became just the two of us. 
Your mother says whatever she wants and just only orders me around, but she doesn't actually cook anything, you know. If you say something stupid like that again, I won't cook for you anymore. O okay, I'm sorry. For my husband, he seemed to think that I suddenly snapped at him and was quite surprised at that time. But on the contrary, it seemed to have a positive effect. And after that, when my mother-in-law served food in front of my husband, Chris would also ask, saying, "Did Marla cook this?" And every time, I would reply, "Yes, I cooked it." Then my husband would say, "Marla, your meals are delicious." I thought at the time that he was a person who could understand if I say it properly, but this in turn made my mother-in-law jealous. Marla, I'll cook today. What? Saying that, my mother-in-law bought a lot of ingredients. Uh, that's a lot. Are you okay? I'll make you realize that what Chris really likes is my cooking. Saying that, my mother-in-law began to cook. I made these meals today. Here, eat up. Oh wow, it's steak. Mom, your steak is really delicious as always. My husband ate it happily. Seeing this, my mother-in-law said with a look of triumph, "See, my cooking is better than yours, isn't it?" But to be honest, I didn't feel irritated at all or anything like that. It didn't matter how good my mother-in-law was at cooking, because it was a given that the food was delicious. All of the ingredients my mother-in-law bought were from high-end stores, and the meat for the steaks were quite expensive. I mean, if she bought it from a place like that, it'd be actually hard to make it not tasty. I may have overspent a little, though. So, Chris, I'm sorry. My mother-in-law would pretend to apologize like that to Chris. My husband, who does not do any housework and doesn't really care about food expenses, said, "Oh, it's fine, fine. Marla is managing the household budget." And told me to pay for what his mother bought today. I was astonished when I saw the receipt she gave me. It had cost two hundred dollars for just one meal. Not only was the meat expensive, but the caviar for garnish, the organic vegetables, the wine that cost a lot for cooking, and so on. The way she spent the money was just reckless. After that, I decided to try not to spoil my mother-in-law's mood and tried to be nice to her. Then my mother-in-law got into a good mood and stopped causing trouble, but it was still stressful for her to come over to our house so often. Later, after the birth of my son, not only my mother-in-law but also my father-in-law decided to come to visit us frequently too. This boy is going to be a big shot like me in the future. Let's buy him a lot of nice things while he's still young, so he can prove his sense of style. My father-in-law would say things like that and buy expensive baby items on his own. When I say, "I think something a little cheaper would be fine," he gets angry and won't listen, saying, "What if that makes his taste worse?" and wouldn't listen to me. I wanted to ask my husband for help, but he was too busy being with my mother-in-law to help me out. My husband, being the insensitive husband that he is, didn't really understand that I was in trouble. When my son was newborn, my father-in-law was still working, so he only came on weekends. But this year, my father-in-law is retiring. If that happens, my father-in-law will definitely come to see my son on weekdays as well. I shudder just thinking about it. Incidentally, this year is my mother's 60th birthday. I wanted to do something for her to thank her for raising me. I wanted to do whatever she wanted. So I went home for the first time in a while and asked my mother, "Is there anything you want to do for your upcoming birthday?" "You don't have to worry about it. You're busy too, aren't you?" "No, no way. It's your 60th birthday, so let me celebrate it properly." "That's right. Thanks to you, honey, I've always been able to live comfortably. Let me thank you properly at a time like this." My father said that, and my mother laughed in embarrassment. What are you doing, saying something like that out of the blue? What? I was just saying what I was thinking. 
seeing my father who was strict but unintentionally making those kind of comments, and my mother who was embarrassed, I felt at ease. Oh yeah, oh, I might have a place I want to go. My mother says so, and I leaned forward to ask, Oh, where do you want to go? To your father's hometown. Marla, you were born right after we got married, so we haven't really had a chance to sightsee around. I see. Father, your hometown is known to be a ski resort, right? Yeah, it is. I haven't been back there in a long time, and since it was my hometown, I didn't really go skiing that much. After coming to the city for college, I realized how precious my hometown was. Let's celebrate Mom's 60th birthday with a trip to the ski resort in Father's hometown, then. Oh, that's right, Marla. I want the inn we're staying at to be here. Saying that, my mother showed me the screen of her smartphone. It showed the website of a certain inn. Oh, is this place? Yes, it is. You might be too small to remember. No, I remember. I was about three years old, right? What the heck? We're going on a trip, but you want to stay at the inn here? Yeah, you miss it too, don't you? Well, yeah, I guess so. I have a feeling they'll be so loud when we go there. Well, anyways, I'll make the reservations. At any rate, I'm glad we've come to an agreement about my mother's 60th birthday celebration. I'm going on a trip to a ski resort with my family for my mother's birthday in a month. I told my husband about my mother's 60th celebration. I see. So your mother is already turning 60 years old, huh? Have fun. Yeah, thanks. My husband agreed without any objection at the time, but later on, he suddenly said something outrageous. For the ski resort trip to your mother's celebration, we're going to join you. What? What do you mean, we? We, meaning my mom, my dad, and I will join you all. You know what I mean, right? Now, wait a minute. Why are you deciding that on your own? It's my mom's 60th celebration, okay? You're supposed to at least ask if you can take your parents, right? Even if you tell me that, both my parents are already in the mood for it. The ski resort we're going to stay at is a popular, luxurious inn that's been featured in magazines and on the TV, right? They were saying that it's not fair that you guys are the only ones going to it. Huh? What do they even mean by that? It sounds like they don't even want to celebrate my mom's 60th birthday. It's just that they feel like they're missing out and are trying to force us to go with them too. That's not true. I'm sure they want to celebrate. No, I don't think so. Then if I tell you we're not going on this trip and we're only just having a celebration dinner, will your parents even come to that? And would you even come? W well, that's... My husband's stuttering attitude indicated the answer. See, you all just want to go because of that ski resort. Knowing that, I don't want to take you guys with us. How dare you treat my parents like that? I've been telling you for a while now that my mother is my priority this time. Your parents should learn to be a little more reserved. Excuse me? Are you trying to insult my parents? I'm just telling you the truth. They come over often and were being really rude to me. That's enough. I'm disappointed in you. Since my mom and dad are already ready to go on that trip, we'll stay at the inn on our own. Fine. I see. Then why don't you do whatever you want? And like that, we had a big argument. Then we didn't talk to each other at all for a long time. I mean, there are only about two weeks left until our trip, and I don't think my husband can even make a reservation. Well, it doesn't matter to me. And we stayed like that as we welcomed the day of the trip. My husband was getting ready early in the morning with his larger luggage. What the heck? So he was able to make a reservation, huh? I was a little disappointed, but decided that I would never go with him. I got ready to leave as well. We left the house at about the same time and we both got into our own cars. 
It took us a little longer to leave because I had to put my son in the car than he did. We then stopped at my parents' house to pick up my parents and then it was off to my father's hometown. We decided to leave our luggage at the inn first, so we went straight to the inn. It seemed that my husband and his parents were thinking the same thing and we saw them at the reception desk first. Seriously? Can't believe we'd meet them here so easily like that. When we arrived at the reception, my husband said something outrageous. I'm Marla Linden and we have a reservation for three people. What? I couldn't believe my ears. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Huh? Who are you? You just tried to spend the night at the inn trying to use my reservation name. Don't say such a thing. I made the reservation under my mother's name. My husband acted as if he was a stranger to me and said such an outrageous thing. In short, he tried to take away the reservation I had made by making my mother-in-law into someone named Marla Linden. As expected, even my parents were appalled by seeing how my husband acted. I was ashamed that such a man was my husband, no matter how much we were in a fight. The receptionist, a young woman, was bewildered by the trouble unfolding before her. Since we were getting nowhere, I decided to show her my ID. I am the real Marla Linden. The staff member said, Yes, ma'am. Thank you for presenting your ID card. And they recognized me as their proper guest. Then my husband and in-laws started to make a fuss. Hey, do you want to exclude us that badly? What a terrible wife you are. What a selfish woman you are. My in-laws were making a fuss without having any care in the world who was looking at them. And then my husband says something outrageous. My parents come first, so make your mother go home already. He had tried to stay at the night. He had tried to stay at the inn by pretending to have his mother be me, and now he was forcing me to give him the right to stay at the inn. It was at this point that my love for my husband had completely disappeared. Right, well, let's go home then. He grinned. Finally, you're obeying me. Well then, make sure to look after our house well. I ignored my husband's words and walked into the inn with my parents. Hey, you! What are you doing? The inn's exit is the other way around. What? You told me to hand over our reservation to you, right? So, we're going home as you asked us to. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? This inn is my father's parents' house, you know. Excuse me? My husband and my in-laws were just speechless. You, you're kidding, right? This luxurious inn is your father's parents' house? Then a woman in her 60s came out from behind the reception desk. Oh, Henry, welcome. Have you come already? That woman is my father's sister. In other words, she's my aunt Paula. Hey, Paula. It's been a long time. I just came to drop off our stuff for now. Oh, hello, Paula. It's been a while. Oh, Linda. It sure has been a while. Then, is that beautiful lady over there Marla? Auntie, it's been a while. You've become so pretty. My aunt was a very powerful person, the opposite of my quiet father. Come on, come on, hurry up and carry the stuff now. Beth, please help them. Y yes, ma'am. My aunt instructed the woman who was working at the reception desk. Then my aunt looked at my husband and his parents who were standing there stunned and called out to them. Oh, have you made any reservations, sir? May I ask your name? My husband and his parents, who had watched our exchanges, could no longer stay at the hotel using my name. But my parents-in-law didn't care. We had made reservations to stay with Marla, you see. That's right. There should have been a reservation for six people. I can't believe my parents-in-law would say such things like that. Then, my husband started to get in on it, too. That's right. And yet, we were told that the reservation was only for three people. Isn't that strange? It was your mistake, wasn't it? Shouldn't you have prepared a room for us somehow? 
It was beyond the disappointment I had for them. They were just doing too much. My father was clenching his fists and was about to snap. Then my aunt stood in front of my husband and his parents and began to apologize. I am very sorry that this was so unpleasant to you all. However, in order to provide the best hospitality, our inn can only accommodate a maximum of three people in any room. Therefore, I think that the statement that there should have been a reservation for six people is incorrect, sir. My parents-in-law and my husband's faces turned pale. If you are still not convinced by this, I have the recorded data of the voice call when Marla Linden made the reservation. So, if you don't mind, I can check that too if you like. When my aunt said this with a dignified expression, my parents-in-law and my husband flinched and said, We might be mistaken, and left right away. Oh, auntie, you're cool. I don't know what that was, but I felt like I shouldn't have invited them in. Well, we can't let them stay at our place because it's fully booked to begin with anyways. I see. My father being a fighter must have come from how he was brought up in this hometown. My father and aunt are so similar in that respect. After that, we went to my father's parents' house which is adjacent to the inn and greeted my grandparents. My father was embarrassed by the many things my grandparents had said to him. We then enjoyed sightseeing in the ski resort, enjoyed delicious food at the luxurious inn owned by my father's family, and stayed in a comfortable room. We also gave my mother her birthday gift and celebrated with my father's family. My mother looked very happy, so I am glad that we were able to carry out the plan. By the way, when I got home, I confronted my husband with the divorce papers. My husband was surprised and angry, but I had my parents there too, so he could not speak strongly to me. My father was very angry about what had happened at that inn and put tremendous pressure on my husband. My husband was completely scared by that and finally signed the divorce papers. Thus, our divorce was finalized. I demanded that there be no division of property and that I have custody of my son. Of course, I also demanded that my husband pay child support. My husband looked unconvinced, but when my father glared at him, he said, That's fine, and accepted the terms. After that, I returned to my parents' home, and with the help of my parents, I am raising my son while working as a single mother. By the way, my ex-husband blamed my ex-parents-in-law, saying, It's you two's fault that I got divorced, and cut off ties from them. Then Chris's mother, who loves her son dearly, blamed her husband, saying, It's your fault that my son is gone, and blamed everything on to Chris's father. Then Chris's father, who felt offended, said, Well then, let's get a divorce. And now they're both divorced too. I didn't think it would end up like that, but it was hilarious, and I think they all got what they deserved. I, on the other hand, am very happy with my family. My mother's room is decorated with family photos taken together to celebrate her 60th birthday, and we talk about going on trips together again. Thank you for watching to the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like. See you in the next video.